What's up guys, this is Steve with Altcoin Buzz and we've got another ICO review for you today. But first I wanted to address some of the community questions about how we stay ahead of what's coming up on the ICOs because there's honestly so many of them to look into. Uh, we don't even get a chance to look into them ourselves, but we only talk to you guys about the ones that we've looked at and we see some sort of potential in. So we still want you guys to do all your own research, but just at least you have somebody like us breaking it down, trying to put it into more layman's terms, like a conversation between two friends. And that way you can get off on the right foot and go do some further research yourself. So first and foremost, a place you can go to sign up to figure out more information about what ICOs are gonna come out in the market and then some other third party analysis of what information you need to know about ICOs. Go ahead and go to icoalert.com. That's one of the sites that we use and you can go ahead and sign up. So if you come up here to the menu, you'd be able to go to alerts, put in your email and they're gonna give you an email notification every time they get a notification that an ICO is gonna be going on the market. So you wanna find out about that ahead of time because the sooner you do your research, the earlier you can make your investment if you're looking at getting into something that has a pre-sale or early sale bonus. They, they have other podcasts and blogs, but here's where you could also go to look at something that's existing. So go and take a look at their uh, blog or their reports, and then you could type in the name of one of the tokens that you wanna look at. And today we're gonna to take a look at Remy. So Remy is solving a very commonplace problem but they're doing it in a very sophisticated way. So you might initially think that these guys are actually just creating a very easy project, but there's actually a lot more complexity to it than what's on the surface. But the fact that it looks easy is part of what makes it have a lot of potential to be mainstream adopted as a security measure for people to lock down their devices and their logins to different accounts. So they're gonna they're planning to replace passwords altogether, and they're gonna replace that with the blockchain and some SSL um, protocols. And we're gonna find out here in just a second a little bit more about how they plan to do that. But reading through on any ICO and ICO alert, you'll be able to find one of their articles of which they break them down. They give you some of the same bullet pointed details that are usually on the website, but then they go into some more explainer text to give you guys in essence in written form of what it is. In this case, they're giving you a memo from the CEO of Remy, that's Alex. And these guys are based out of the British Virgin Islands, but it seems like they also have some strong ties to the Ukraine uh, based upon our research into this team. So, you know, they, they announced British Virgin Islands, look a little bit further into it, figure out, you know, what may be going on. Now, we went to their website, we checked it out, and they have an explainer video here that uses a little bit of animation to break it down in layman's terms. And essentially the video lets you know that you're if you are a, have a lot of sensitive data at your business, like customer information, health records, um, scientific discoveries, you name it, and they use this like science lab guy. Um, your biggest point of failure is actually gonna be your employees. Your employees are the ones that are gonna help facilitate a data breach, knowingly or unknowingly. So if, let's say an employee uh, would like to sell the information about some passwords or logins to a interested third party, or give it away, or left their laptop open while they were at the coffee shop, you name it, um, or just use the same password for their Netflix account that they used for this super secret business um, file, and now their Netflix account got hacked per se. Now you put your data at risk, and we've seen it happen time and time again. Sony is notable. Um, it happened to Home Depot, happened to Target, and just anybody holding on to like credit card information, personal identifying information, is just prone to become a target for this data theft. So. Not only are they gonna be making a security measure to lock down data and prevent it from being easily stolen, but they're also going to be essentially making it more convenient to log into all of your accounts all at once. And by doing that, they're hoping to become more adopted in the mainstream rather than becoming something that feels totally complex to users. It really is gonna replace the um, common, commonly understood login with Facebook concept. Like right now, you've got your Facebook account, most likely, we're assuming you use that. And then you sign into a new website using a, a developer app that was created on the Facebook developers platform to be able to log in using your Facebook ID, which creates a username and password or some kind of token on the back end at that site you're going to. You may not even be fully aware of that information. It may or may not be related to your Facebook login info, but you're able to get in with your Facebook ID. 
So that would be a parallel to what Remy's trying to do. Remy's trying to make it a device specific login. So unlike that Facebook login where you could go home and you can log in from a cell phone, you can log in from a computer, you can log in from a tablet, log in from who knows what, right? Anything that's connectable. Even a robot potentially could log in. Um, and now they're going to take that and with a little bit of blockchain anchoring and some Ethereum based tokenization, they're going to be able to store an SSL certificate signature on a device in particular and then store that SSL cert out there on the Ethereum blockchain for verification. So that file won't even be centralized enough for it to be stolen off of a device and then used and copied onto a second device. So the blockchain is going to even take that SSL certificate type of protocol and take it one step further by removing it from the device. So, and then the basically the blockchain part of it is the anchoring that's going to be able to verify whether one of these certificates is in a valid status or revoke status and so on and so forth. So you'll be able to use the telegram, telegram two-factor authentication in combination with this. So if you've tried that, very similar to Google two-factor authentication, at least at a very high level. And these guys are looking at being able to help the everyday person um, remember their passcodes or, or not need to remember their passcodes to log into things like their email, their bank account, so on and so forth. And then being able to help businesses by forcing logins to be authenticated based on devices, um, which could then be controlled a little bit more easily by the business. So let's say that you have workstations at work and those things aren't necessarily portable and you have your employees that you want to be able to log in and access the information that's proprietary. Well, of course, you'd probably already have that information that would be on some sort of um, intranet that wouldn't be accessible outside of the business in most cases. But imagine taking it one step further in the fact that you would actually have to be listed on or be logged into a very particular device to access information. And you wouldn't be able to duplicate that and go home with that and sell that to somebody else or log in from home and then have your home computer hacked into at the coffee shop, whatever the case might be. Um, so this is this is a real world problem that they're proposing a pragmatic solution to using blockchain technology. So it's not an overly complicated project. And these guys have actually already been um, trying to tackle this in a lot of business use cases over the last two years. Um, so they've been developing since 2016. They started on the Emmercoin blockchain. They've moved over to the Bitcoin blockchain where they've created this anchoring and integrated with Telegram two-factor authentication. And now they're creating an ERC-20 token, which is actually going to be the information passed back and forth between the consumers and the network to get you logged in. Now, they haven't specifically mentioned any type of fancy wallet technology or data transfer technology such as Plasma or Lightning, but it appears that if you read further into how their software works and the private key information and all that stuff, it seems like they're using a type of, um, a type of off ledger type of technology. At least that's my observation. They don't come out and blatantly say that, but I, but otherwise tokens and fees would need to be integrated every single time you decided to log in or out of your device. And that would just be expensive and cumbersome. So what you're actually doing is you're getting one of their tokens and their tokens are going to be used for creating the certificate in the first place. And that's going to be held onto until you decide to either revoke that certificate or um, cash it out. So let's say you have a cell phone and you go ahead and you lock in your authentication to that cell phone. You're going to go ahead and use one of their tokens, the Remy tokens to um, lock that device in on the blockchain with an SSL and this whole login process. And then later on you sell your, your cell phone or let's say it gets stolen and you go onto one of your other authenticated devices and you list that new device or that old device as being revoked. And then now anybody else who has that device won't be able to log in. So this would be really handy for network administrators, for example, that want to be able to create the accounts on behalf of all their employees and then revoke all privileges from somebody to log into a device or log into an internal network or log into an account um, at any given time. So like pre-termination, pre um, disciplinary action, anything like that may, may be the case. Or maybe the business had a broken, stolen device or a lot of turnover. So this is, this is highly valuable to individuals for convenience and for businesses for security. And, and for employees or for people, it's also valuable for security. So let's look at their ICO. Now they just wrapped up their private sale. So we've already missed out on the opportunity to get a 40% bonus. Um, but the retail value 
the during the ICO of their REM tokens is just four cents and that's like the end of the world as we know it little rem joke for you guys i hope we're all in the same generation that we understand what i'm talking about but during the regular public sale they're actually going to have some bonuses that are going to um, help kick in so on the first three days of the public sale they've got a 10 percent bonus and on days four through seven they're going to have a five percent bonus so it appears that in february with which their ico actually has dates that are to be determined in February. So their, their pre-sale, pre according to ICO alert, started on December 4th, and that was, that was a 20% bonus. Sorry, earlier I said 40%, I meant 20%. And they're selling 500 million out of 1 billion tokens during the sale, and the other uh, 500 million are being held on to for other reasons. Now, they are not going to be burning any of the unsold tokens, which is, um, it's one of the options out there for ICOs, but you want to learn that because then you wonder what's going to happen because then those coins can actually come into the circulating supply at a later date. That's good and that's bad, um, especially if you're buying into coins. And let's say they haven't met their full $20 million of hard cap to sell all 500,000 or 500 million of those coins. Let's say they only meet half. Well, then you have a successful ICO that's already met its soft cap. There's 250 million coins in that example that are then being locked up for three years in this case. And then three years from now, they'd have the opportunity as the business to enter those into the marketplace, which would, you know, not to say flood the market, but it essentially could because that would be um, a large supply now entering circulation out of the total supply. But it's good to know at least that they don't ha they don't show to have the ability to continue to produce coins. It's literally one billion capped at coins, no ability to generate more. We could, of course, look into programs like Blue or one of these other services to try to authenticate the validity of those statements um, or whether the code does or doesn't allow the ability to mint more coins. But we encourage you guys to take a look at these um, at this project. Now, I'm looking right now at tokensale.remy.io, which is tokensale.remme.io, and you guys will be able to take a look at it. Now, We've also seen these guys listed in the news elsewhere. We read on, we read, read about them on Forbes and in Hacker Noon, but there are a couple other places talking about this type of technology. So let's take a look at the Forbes article that we had here. And this is one of their contributors that's writing about three different ways that blockchain's being used for cybersecurity. And there, there's a couple other things out there like guard time, which is one of the other ones coming out of Estonia that's going to be used to prevent cyber attacks. You've got Remy, which we're talking about right now, which is used for like basically replacing passwords by logging in through SSL certs that are decentralized. And then you have Obsidian, which is take, technically looking at locking down other types of info. But the blockchain, because of its de decentralized nature, um, you know, you're going to have all this information distributed without a single point of failure. And that's the point of the blockchain is that the whole network has to fail for, for pretty much any of it to have to fail. So let's say you're going to log in and somebody goes and hacks a server that was holding on to part of the decentralized information pertaining to everyone's passcodes. Well, they would only receive a portion of it, not a portion of the total passwords or the SSL certs. They would receive fractions of each individual one, which would mean that basically they're trying to put together an entire puzzle with one of the many hundreds or thousands of pieces. Um, and they don't know necessarily how many pieces there are or what shape the puzzle piece they have even is. So they would have basically have to hack the entire network in order to be able to get the information. Now, one point though, if you're really interested in the, in the security here, it does appear that if you have theft of the actual device, that prior to the certificate being revoked through their network, you would still be prone to having information accessible. So this would mean that somebody would have to physically get their hands and, and take your cell phone, or you'd have to leave it somewhere and somebody would have to dive into the information there. So that could also be where having two-factor authentication would create that second layer of security, right? So let's say you've left your phone somewhere or somebody stole your laptop and they wanna to try to log in as you, but now they don't have your cell phone or one other type of account. They can't use the Telegram two-factor authentication to log in. So that second layer of security that's off blockchain provides that additional layer that's necessary to make sure that basically 
Short of being held hostage for your information and forced to give it up with the devices in hand, there's really not a lot of ways that somebody with bad intentions is going to be able to get access easily to all that information. Um, maybe you guys can think of ways around this, but if you do, I'd suggest you jump into like their Telegram group or one of the other sections and tell them how their how their fault how the faults are lined up in their in their uh, business model. So. Here's what they break down, basically, like what the heck happens. You get average Joe, which I assume he's average Joe, and he's got a really basic password. Then you've got this other user who uses SSLs for his device. So using Remy is going to make you a more secure person. Don't be like that guy. Um, and then how the vulnerability of not being on decentralized systems. And then the pricing. So th there's... There's no need for businesses here to have to purchase these really fancy um, infrastructures and licenses. I mean, you are purchasing a license from the fact of buying the REM tokens and then utilizing them to create the security protocol between device and network for, for login. But you're not having to go out and pay things like uh, really extensive Microsoft licensing fees, um, Amazon Azure licensing fees, or... Um, Man, I could think of so many that businesses over the years that I've worked with have had to pay for Adobe, you name it. Like every time some business or enterprise wants to touch one of these major corporation um, softwares, as a, it, might, it might even be something that you take for granted and use for free as a end user, but as an enterprise level, then they don't tend, typically get things like Skype chat and stuff like that without having to pay out the nose for those things. So take a look into these guys. See if there's something that you're looking to get behind. We've, you know, we've heard some feedback from you guys that ICOs are not necessarily for all of you. Some of you guys just want to be day trading, investing in coins, and that's cool. I mean, I'm thanks for showing your support either way. We like to diversify up, and usually at any, any one given time, I'm in one or two ICOs, sometimes more, depending on really how compelling some of them are. Um, I've, I've even been known to move coins from a, you know, a trading position and, and give up the Ethereum or the Bitcoin to a project just for the sake of, I'm generally aware that like a really good ICO is potentially going to turn around in a you know, month's time or two months time, however long it takes for them to generate their tokens and distribute them is generally going to turn out a really wealthy profit for me comparative to what might happen if I just hold on to my coins in their current position. So take that type of trading principle with a grain of salt because you still have to be responsible for your own trades, do your own research, and make and push the button to buy and sell on your end. But I would be looking at something like Remy, not just for being something that seems well put together and marketable, but also from the standpoint of being practical, if not forced upon people within businesses for being a cost-effective way for them to potentially get one step closer to data security. And if you've heard anything about PCI Level 1 compliance, I haven't read whether Remy is actually compliant with that, but I know from working with businesses that they're looking at working with other companies that are certified at that level. And certainly data breaches are one, one of the main key factors that those businesses are trying to mitigate the risks of being exposed to. Hence, ideas like Remy coming in with the blockchain and introducing those rather than just simple proprietary services. Now, they're going to also produce a software kit so people could build other types of decentralized apps on their protocols, which would be great if you're looking at building an even further security network or you have another addition or layer you want to add to it, like how uh, we see other forks and enhancements come out for coins um, out there on the market. So take a look at their white paper. It is massive. I'm not going to bore you with details, but I think you get the gist of it if you've listened to what I've talked about, where you have the, the public key information and SSLs. And, and basically using the blockchain and decentralized servers as well as nodes to be able to validate the SSL sign-in of the user, get you into your normal accounts without having an actual alphanumeric type of password that's also then backed up by two-factor authentication. So drop in the comments below what you think. We appreciate the support from you guys out there, and we like the support from programs like these that are able to bring these reviews to you without the use of regular advertisements. So Kudos to the Remy team for making that possible to us. This is Steve from Altcoin Buzz signing off.